All right, for today's video, we're going to talk about scatter plots and trend lines. Okay, sometimes you might hear it line of best fit instead of trend line, or least squares regression line as you get into higher levels. All right, so some vocabulary. Bivariate data. Bivariate data is data that is made up of two different variables. So bi means two, variate means variables. So bivariate data has two variables. A scatter plot is a great visual for two variable data, which graphs points with one variable plotted along each axis. Okay, so we would take both our variables. One variable would be on the x-axis, another variable would be on the y-axis, and then we'd make ordered pairs and plot the points. Correlation is a measure of the strength and direction of the relationship between the two variables. All right, so here's some scatter plots. As you can see, um, some of them are going in an upward direction, so those are positively correlated. So that first graph has a positive correlation, this one here. The next one in the middle, it's going down. If I look at it from left to right, like I read a sentence, the points are starting to go down. So that has a negative correlation. And then if there's not really a pattern, you can't tell if it's going up or going down when you look at it from left to right, then that would be no correlation. All right, the correlation coefficient, denoted by the letter R, so we use the letter R for correlation coefficient, varies from any number between negative one and one with the signs matching which type of correlation. So if it's a negative correlation, meaning it's going down, it's gonna have a negative correlation coefficient. If it's a positive correlation, the points are going up, it's going to have a positive correlation coefficient. If it's a very strong correlation, meaning the points are almost make a perfect line, then it's going to be close to either positive one if it's positive, or negative one if it's negative. A weak correlation, the weaker it gets, meaning the more spread out the points are, the closer it's going to be to zero. All right. So estimate the correlation coefficient for each scatter plot. I'm going to either estimate, is it close to negative 1, negative 1 half, 0, positive 1 half, or 1. So if I look at the first one, it, it's almost in a perfect line. Okay, I have that one point kind of making it not perfect. Okay, but it's not that scattered. It's pretty close together. So I would say that one has a correlation coefficient, which we call R, which is about or approximately 1. So those squiggly equal signs are for approximately or about. So my correlation coefficient for the first one is close to 1. The second one, it's kind of hard to tell if it's going up or down. So if it's positive or negative, and it's pretty spread out, so we would say that that correlation coefficient is close to 0. So it's approximately 0. The third one, it's very obviously negative. It's going down, it's, but um, it's kind of spread out. It's a lot more spread out than the first one. So we're going to say it's negative one-half, negative 0 0.5. All right. So the number of snowboarders and skiers at a resort per day and the amount of new snow the resort reported that morning are shown in the table. Okay. Make a scatter plot of the data. So if you see my scatter plot, I have my, on my x-axis the amount of new snow in inches. On my y-axis, I have the number of snow sliders, so either snowboarders or snow skiers. All right. So my first point is 2, 1146. So two inches of snow, and there was 1146 uh, snowboarders and snow skiers. So there's my first point. I plot it as close as I can. Okay, so they're counting by 250 each time they go up. All right. The next one is for 1,556, so my point would be right around there, and then 6, 1,976, so right there, 8, 2,395, and 10, 2,490. So all we really did so far was plot ordered pairs. Okay, now I'm going to draw a line of best fit. So I'm going to draw a line, I'm going to estimate where I think that line should go so that it's in the middle of those points. Okay, so my line looks like that. Okay, your line might be a little bit different. Okay, I have a few points that are above it, 
a few points that are below the line. So I'm trying to put the line in the best location so that it's kind of in between most of the points. Okay, and if you have one weird point, it's going to pull your line towards that weird point. So the further that point is out on the x-axis, the more it's going to pull and affect your line. All right, so they want me to write an equation for my line of best fit. So I'm going to write an equation in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. Because it's a line, it's linear, I can write a linear equation. So we're going back to previous skills. y equals mx plus b. Well, they didn't tell me a slope, so I have to estimate the slope. Well, my line, it looks like it kind of goes through the point to 1146 and then the point 8, 2395. So you're going to pick two points from your data set and we're going to find the slope. So the change in y, so 2395 minus 1146 over the change in x, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, 8 minus 2 is 6. When I divide those I get about 208. So my slope is about 208. So y equals mx. Remember your slope is m. So y equals 208x plus b. So I need my y-intercept. That's b. So if I go back to my scatter plot and I see where my line is crossing, it looks like it's crossing. That tick mark above the 500 would be 750. It's a little bit above there, so we'll say that's about 825. We're just kind of estimating. Okay, so our, our line's not going to be exact. If we were using um, a graphing calculator or if we were using a computer uh, software, we could plug in each ordered pair and we could get the calculator or the computer to give us the exact equation. But we're just kind of estimating for this. Question C, it says, if the resort reports 15 inches of new snow, how many skiers and snowboarders would you expect at the resort that day? So X represents the number of inches of snow. So I'm going to plug 15 in for X into my equation. So it's going to be 208 times 15 plus 825. When I multiply that, 208 times 15, and I add 825, I get 3,945. So I would expect there to be 3,945 skiers and snowboarders at the resort. All right.